Hello, everyone. Uh, we have Kelvin Tan with us, uh, and he'll be talking about electromechanical platform with removable overlay for exploring, tuning, uh, tuning and evaluating reinforcement, reinforcement learning algorithms. Yeah, uh, Kelvin, uh, the stage is all yours. OK, thank you, Girish. Good afternoon. Um, as uh, Girish mentioned, this is my title of my talk. Uh, I will um, speak a bit quickly because this original uh, number of slides right, require about 40 minutes uh, to complete. So I will move uh, quickly. So if you have any questions, uh, we can bring it uh, offline or discuss after the talk. Thank you. So the outline of my talk, uh, the motivation and purpose is uh, what I'm going to uh, uh, share with you. And after that, the journey for the platform development. I'll give you a demonstration and we will proceed with overview of reinforcement learning. I'll share uh, some results of what was uh, and then proceed to discussion and uh, what I plan to do uh, as a follow up. The inspiration uh, or motivation for the talk is basically number one is curiosity, right? So uh, it's based on uh, uh, after learning and uh, reading about reinforcement learning, and especially after watching a documentary from Dr. Claude Shannon, uh, this uh, really intrigues me. So I wanted to uh, try out not just the algorithm on the uh, virtual platform, but on a physical platform. So a bit more about Dr. Shannon. Those, so Dr. Shannon is a, um, very famous for coming out with the channel, uh, sorry, uh, Shannon's channel capacity theorem. So with this uh, channel capacity theorem, right, he's able to calculate what is the capacity of any given channel, right? Be it uh, wired or wireless, right? So with that, scientists and engineers are able to calculate what is the bandwidth, uh, I mean, the can channel capacity based on bandwidth. And uh, it's also found that the bandwidth uh, is also right related to the signal to noise signal to noise is an important factor when, when determining what is the uh, capacity of a channel. So with that, right, uh, we are able to move on to the information age. Otherwise, it will be very difficult, right, without a clear formula. How thick, how many cables, how powerful uh, the transmission channel or the size of the cables would be, right, uh, especially for this internet. Uh, H with the fiber fiber optic cables uh, being laid on C. Um, so he's oh, is also very uh, interesting inventor. He's not just um, theor theorist. He invented this uh, electromechanical mouse uh, platform, right? Based on the nineteen fifties technology, it's very amazing because at the time we do not have uh, advanced computers and powerful computers. So this mouse was able to explore the maze and uh, navigate to a given position in the uh, mechanical platform. Amazing. The maze solving algorithm uh, is now being uh, pursued right uh, for many undergraduate studies, right, uh, or even secondary school uh, robotics clubs whereby students explore the use of a miniature robot to find its way out of the maze. There are many uh, algorithms uh, being uh, deployed. Right? Uh, it can be quite simple, right? just uh, some logical uh, program, right? instead of uh, even reinforcement learning. So you can uh, find out more from the Wikipedia page link here. And I also put the link in the uh, reference. So journal of my journey, the work started in um, September 2019. I, uh, I, I was I got a 3D printer and I was experimenting with uh, the printing 
of um, items using the 3, 3D printer. So after doing the basic uh, stuff, I wanted to challenge myself and uh, started building uh, this platform right in April 2020. Uh, so the design, build, test, iterate process started there. So in July 2020, I uh, did the coding and testing. And um, in August 2020, uh, added the additional uh, improvement to it, the power supply circuitry to stabilize the power and the Bluetooth connectivity. In March 2021, I uh, started to work on the level prototype. Just wonder whether the stage is functioning. Okay. Hi, sorry about that. Uh, my screen uh, froze. So the features of the electromechanical reinforcement learning uh, it doesn't require camera, no imaging required. The platform tilts eight direction. So uh, I will explain a bit more about this later. So basically, uh, in order to get the ball uh, to move within the platform, it needs to be uh, tilted, right? The ball itself doesn't uh, doesn't self propel like the robots, but it's being uh, uh, driven by gravity, right, to a certain direction uh, based on the tilt of the platform. And the algorithm uh, also added feature to automatically detect walls. And uh, the platform has self balancing feature. The platform and computing module communicates via Bluetooth. Uh, and uh, the platform or the maze itself, right? The whatever that sits on the platform, the maze uh, can interchange easily. Uh, this allows the uh, maze to be of uh, different variation, different design, or even immersed in liquid or enclosed, right? To provide a different challenge um, and also different uh, uh, environment, right? A completely different environment for the algorithm to. Uh, learn and explore. So the original maze uh, or this program is adapted from Eric Delange um, source code. He built this uh, very good uh, maze exploration uh, uh, program with uh, many options for algorithms, many different algorithms to be deployed. And it runs, it runs on a virtual environment. So the maze is eight by eight and the agent or the ball uh, can move in four directions. So we'll just name it uh, as degree of freedoms. So namely the agent, right, or the ball, in this case is marked the rate, right? This is the rate uh, current location of the agent on the ball. Uh, it can move in uh, four directions, right? Not east, south, west. So, program to make it into 16 by 16 because uh, we need to account for the uh, obstacle or the walls. In this case, the walls are not pre programmed into it, right? It's uh, depending on the uh, physical maze itself. So, the agent has to discover the barriers or the walls by itself during movement. And I also help the agent to move uh, in a diagonal uh, position as well. So right because of that, now he has eight degree of uh, freedom of then you will uh, take up a lot of computation, computational power. OK, uh, the 
platform is printed using a simple open source uh, software, a CAD designer. In this case, I use a Tinkercad for the initial prototype. Uh, it's uh, quite tedious, right? It's simple, but it's quite tedious. Uh, and uh, any mistakes would result uh, not fitting and have to be reprinted, right? Redesigned and reprinted. So this is the photo of the platform. So the uh, mechanical platform here uh, is being done up in the mid middle, right? And then another photo of this, right? So using uh, cheap uh, sensor bots and detectors. Another photo here. So this is the completed platform, the top part of the platform. So you can see that it's driven by two servo to control the X, Y tilt. So I give you a demo of the run here. So at this uh, demo run, the, the control is uh, through communication is via the PC zero cable. And at the same time, uh, it's also connected to my mobile phone using Bluetooth. Right, so you can see that I am um, setting up the notification to feed the stage information to my Bluetooth, right? It will send information like the location of the ball or the agent and also the tilt direction and uh, other information. So I put this magnetic ball onto the stage so this is the ball or the agent and it's being rolled around, right? So the embedded hall sensors will detect the position of the ball approximately. With that, the algorithm can um, process the information and make decisions. So this is the run on uh, uh, visualized on the screen. So the red uh, dot is the agent or the ball. So it's being rolled around within the uh, environment. So the goal is to be to drive the agent to the exit, which is marked. Uh, green so because we are running the q table and sasa algorithm uh, it doesn't really know where the exit is initially it's discovering the environment so after a couple of runs right uh, i started to realize that certain position cannot be driven to right for example uh, when the stage tries to drive not right when the ball is at a certain position and the ball doesn't move anywhere not they realize that uh, maybe there is a obstacle or wall blocking the part of this ball right so repeated uh, attempts and, uh, with failure would result in the uh, marking the position on top of next to this uh, agent uh, with gray right so it's a okay, it's possibility of a obstacle there right so more attempts resulted in darker gray and eventually black. So when the um, cell is marked black, then the algorithm would remove the possibility of moving right for this agent uh, from at that position. So for example, this uh, dot, this agent or the ball is now here. So when the stage is being driven not and the ball doesn't go not, then probably there is a obstacle here, then it should be marked uh, gray. And repeated attempt, attempts uh, with failure would uh, remove the possibility of even moving, the, trying to uh, move the uh, ball not by tilting. Okay, so uh, a bit more attempts here, right? So it's still discovering its way around. Uh, so the efficiency or the learning effectiveness depends on the algorithm. I'll share a bit more about this uh, later. 
So as you can see, uh, it is uh, quite a long process. Okay, so after many runs, most of the walls have been confirmed or the obstacles have been confirmed. So um, it's all black now, right? The markers are all black. The boxes are black. Okay. So you can see the agent is like moving back and forth. Uh, it's because of the uh, exploration, right? Exploration rate. So these uh, are all tunable parameters. So after many attempts, finally, it, uh, complete learning. And this shows the replay. So just the replay, right? Uh, not the actual movement because uh, it's very fast. So it, the algorithm has learned the maze, this maze, right? And it's able to consistently find its way to the exit. So this is the uh, visualization of the learning process. I will share this uh, in the next page. It's a bit clearer here. So the first top uh, chart is the win weight versus episode. So win is when the agent manages to find the exit, right? Go to the exit. So how many percent, how many, how, what is the likelihood of it getting to the exit, right? The chances, right? Initially, it's very low. It's just moving around randomly. And when it reaches a, a episode or a movement limit, it will just stop and fail. So initially, because it's moving randomly, it's not able to get to the exit on time, right? But over time, uh, it's able to do so. And eventually, at around 700 episodes, it's able to get to the exit cons uh, consistently. The cumulative uh, reward is a reward that we place on the agent, right? So uh, it's like a when the agent or the ball reaches the exit, it gets a positive, big positive reward. But uh, any movement, uh, a movement itself would have a small negative reward. This is like energy drain, right? So uh, we can see that uh, even at 700 is, uh, initially it drops very much, but then after that, uh, the rate of descent uh, stabilizes. So you know, eventually if we allow this to run further, right? We allow to run more episodes, it will eventually uh, recover. The reward will be in the positive territory. So a bit more on the uh, concept of reinforcement learning. So this chart here uh, shows the ecosystem for the uh, reinforcement agent in relation to its environment. So the agent in this case is the ball that is rolling around. So the environment is the space that is allowed to roll in. In this case, it's the maze. So what can the agent do, right? The agent, agent can move. Uh, in the eight directions I mentioned, the eight degrees of freedom mentioned. So uh, in this case, right, the agent don't propel itself, but is being uh, driven by the tip, right, being 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 uh, forced by the tilt of the stage, right. So, but the but the result is the same, right. The agent get to move. So um, the agent move into. Uh, within the environment and within the environment, the states. So states are like the individual position within the maze, right? The individual cells within the maze. And uh, with each state, there is an associated reward. So for our case, the reward is only at the exit, right? So the green box exit will get a reward. Any other state, it will not have any reward. The movement itself will have uh, more of a penalty. So the is the Bellman equation uh, explains this uh, pretty well. This is the basic groundwork, uh, fundamental equation for the reinforcement learning. So over here on the left hand side is the value um, 
term, right? Value is what is the value and bracket. We have this S, the value of a position within the environment or the state, right? This is the value of a certain state. On the right-hand side, uh, we have this max A and then bracket, uh, this R, reward, bracket, state, and action, plus this uh, gamma, discount factor, value of the next state. So what this is, is what, what uh, this uh, term says that is, that, okay, what is the value of this state, right? So this particular state within the environment, the value can kind of like be calculated by finding the maximum of this one, okay? These two terms here. So this is the reward of the agent in a particular state taking action. So in our case, it can move up, <clears throat> it can move in the any of the eight directions. So you'll find the maximum reward uh, uh, for the eight directions it can move, right? So if moving not gives the best uh, reward, then that is the max. And over here, we have this discount factor plus the value of the subsequent subsequent uh, state as well. So this uh, not only looking ahead one step, but looking ahead many steps, right? Beyond the immediate, right? So by with this, the agent can uh, drive itself to the reward, right? The ultimate reward, which is the exit. So this um, uh, chart, I hope uh, be able to explain this better. So uh, this is the starting point. Uh, this is a starting cell. And uh, the, this is the uh, barrier or wall, right? And over on the top uh, left-hand corner, we have the exit cell with a value of 100. And uh, next to it, there's another wall, okay? So uh, agent, we have moved two cells here, right? We assume we are uh, talking about starting here. So the agent um, has three parts or actually four parts to choose, right? You can move left, up, uh, uh, northeast, and also uh, southeast, okay? So where, which direction provides the best value, right? So we can use the Bellman's equation to calculate the value of any um, state or cells within this environment, right? So assume, uh, as, as mentioned, the value at the exit is 100, so we can calculate backwards, um, right? But if we put the discount factor at 10%, that means uh, the cell, every cell that is away from the ultimate goal would have a uh, value 10% less, okay? So if this is 100, then the agent or the, sorry, the, 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 the cell here would have a value of 90, right? One step away. And then the step, this cell here, 10% less than here, we get 81. And this cell is 73. So we can calculate backwards from here. So how about the other part, uh, the top part? So uh, from here to the next cell is 81, 73, 66, okay? And how about uh, the part northeast, right? So um, because this this is closer to the exit, the, age, the cell the agent currently is, is closer to the exit. So there's no other part to the exit. So this is 10% off. This 73 is 66, and this is 659. Here is also 66. So uh, with this, the
algorithms running, we have a Q search Q table, right? This Q table algorithm, Sasa algorithm, Q table with uh, trace eligibility, Sasa with trace eligibility, and uh, Q neural network, Q table neural network. Okay, so uh, a bit more about if you want to find out a bit more about the algorithm, you can uh, look up in the uh, in the references. Okay, so my time is okay, getting short. So um, you can see that all the algorithms are able to train. And the interesting thing is that the trace eligibility and SASA eligibility, the learning is uh, faster. So it's able to get to a um, win rate of one quicker. Neural network seems to be slowest. Okay, so this shows the training time and number of episodes required to train the algorithm so uh, it seems like uh, all these uh, four first four algorithm is able to train quickly but the neural network uh, may be a bit difficult right one thing about neural network is much more uh, processor intensive right uh, so uh, it is also able to work right neural network so we can see that uh, it's able to train and function well, right? As I mentioned just now about the reward, right? After initially uh, getting to the negative negative territory, uh, repeat continued attempts will uh, yield positive results once it found the exit. Okay. So this is the result for the sixteen by sixteen times eight degree of freedom uh, uh, platform. So I just want to clarify. This uh, virtual platform, a emulated platform, and a physical platform, right? So this is done on the emulated platform. So we can see that uh, is because the neural network is uh, very uh, processor and time intensive. I did not include the results here. Okay, so we can see that the all the algorithms is able to work uh, on the platform, right? With uh, sixteen by sixteen and eight trigger of freedom. So over here, we have the um, timing and episode details as well, right? We can see that uh, over here, uh, it's limited to 1,000. So I, I can um, increase the limit so that we can see a bit more granularity details here. So discussion. So the considerations between the virtual, emulated, and physical platform, right? For the virtual platform, the speed is basically determined by the power of the CPU and graphics, right, C GPU. So if we disable the graphics rendering, then uh, it can be even faster. But for emulated platform and certainly physical platform, there's physics to be considered, right? So the ball can't uh, uh, roll instantly. So it also depends on the tilt. So achievable, uh, time is about one second per action and the second is the size of the maze right because uh of the multiplication of cells right we have eight by eight 64 but when we increase to 16 by 16 it will be 256 and we haven't even considered the degree of freedom right we still have to consider the eight uh, possible freedom of movement for the agent and we also have to think about the tilt angle. So uh, one more thing about this uh, is that the agent within the physical environment, right, can roll multiple cells in the emulated, or oh, sorry, in the, in the original platform, the agent can only move the next cell. But in the physical platform, it can actually jump several cells or roll several cells, right, or into the exit. So uh, with this, a powerful algorithm like the neural network might be uh, able to figure out shortcuts, which is very interesting, something that should be uh, uh, investigated uh, later. So uh, quickly, what is, why hardware? So hardware is not 100% predictable, right? So if we want to actually test the robustness of the algorithm, then we should actually test it on the physical hardware, right? Uh, if you try to model a lot of intricacies, right, then it will take a lot of work. 
right? And even then, it may not be accurate. So we can quickly swap the uh, hardware platforms on the same algorithm to test the robustness of the algorithm. Then why not use camera, right? Uh, camera is very uh, high resolution and you know, is very commonly used nowadays. Uh, so camera uh, also requires more processing power, right? Okay, that's just one thing. And then the other thing is that, uh, second is that it's sensitive to lighting and requires uh, contrast, high contrast, right? Uh, and alignment. So if your platform is tilting, right? If the platform is tilting, then the camera also has to kind of like uh, be tangent to the platform, right? So it has to, the whole assembly has to move. Uh, and because of that, we have to think about the fixture to mount the camera above the platform. It has to be high enough to capture a good view, right? Not uh, any shadows from the walls, right? So, so that is uh, also uh, blocks the easy observation of the stage, right, from from the viewers. Hello, Kelvin. So, uh, yes. Yeah, Kelvin, uh, okay. uh, we are out of time, actually. Oh, okay, okay. I'm so sorry about that. Uh, I, my talk, uh, I will provide the link, or I think uh, uh, PyCon already uh, 